impossible to achieve in four years, but as a yeah. What's interesting about that is not ISIL, he's saying radical Islamic terror. That's correct. He went much further and much farther. That would go to Boko Haram. I it, assume that's Michael Flynn's influence. It is very much General Flynn. If the field of fight had been read, it Google, wouldn't have yeah, been surprised exactly. anyone. And I, I confirmed before, in fact, that... But, but are you at one with Michael Flynn in terms of how he sees Islam? Uh, I, I do not believe that I'm not that sure that you that make tweet, that kind of separation for radical Islamic fundamentalism. I reread Field of Fight two weeks ago before this because I wanted to know what General Flynn, I'd had him on when the yeah. book came out in June. Right. He's very nuanced on it. Uh, General McChrystal is very high on him. I think he has been unfairly... General McChrystal is very high on him as an intelligence officer. Right. And, as a, and in the old NSC, which is the and, operator and NSC. As he was, his right-hand man right. in Afghanistan. And so I've got a lot of hopes for General Flynn and the cartoon image of him that has emerged is what I think attaches to most warriors when they try and become politicians. They're not very good at it. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I think the argument, I, I would like to have him here at the table, had him here when his book, and, and because of General Crystal, McChrystal, he was highly admired for his work as an intelligence officer in Afghanistan. Then he ran into some trouble at, at, within the Pentagon, as you know, and he thinks, thinks that the CIA is way too politicized, as you know. And, and Pompeo, who's a friend of mine, Representative now Director Pompeo, went over there, I think, with the express mission to act as a military officer, not as a congressman, and bring order out of chaos that exists there. I think the agency was demoralized. I think there is no split between... demoralized before by, by what? Uh, the refusal to deal with facts on the ground, uh, the, the use of the CENTCOM intelligence that was perverted, the refusal to, to call... Uh, ISIS, the threat that it is, and call them the JVs. They're very brave men and women, and they're very clear-eyed. I've known a number of them over the years, and I, I do not believe... In fact, Lawrence Wright, I would refer again back to his yeah. book, they were not listened to. They've never really been listened to about how to combat the rapid spread they of Islamic... Being uh, the, all case of officers, the CIA desk or, officers, all of CIA. I mean, there's I really, always, you, as you know, there's always been division within the CIA. You would expect it to be. They do not come to uh, analysis with all seeing uh, the same facts, and I mean, they see some see these facts, some see these facts. Not a, not choosing the facts you want, uh, but there. That's the nature of the CIA. It is to look at a lot of evidence and then uh, figure out, and then say to the president, "This is what we found," and and then uh, and more than it is to recommend a cause of action. I'd put this as a question, you Charlie. Do you agree the, with the that? No, because I think the crisis of credibility in the intelligence community is larger than it's been for a while. Director Clapper is an honorable man. John Brennan has served his country for a long time, but I don't believe they were willing to push the president to reality on the JVs. And the president has tried to distance himself from that. But how wrong could we have been about that decision in December of 11 to withdraw from Iraq and the consequences of it, the threat that it poses? How wrong could we have been? The national intelligence... Do you believe without... If, if in fact, there had been an agreement, uh, and the Alaki government was not anxious to make an agreement, but you believe that, if, in fact, the United States had insisted on an agreement... I uh, had stayed there, ISIL would never have grown. I do. And in fact, I don't even think we need an agreement. We have more than 5,000, perhaps as many as 10,000 special forces on the ground now without an agreement. Uh, that's the number that the generals asked for in 2007. President Obama wanted out. He made a promise, like President Trump has made promises, and he fulfilled it, and he's willing to live with the consequences of it, and he defends it in, with people like Jeffrey Goldberg and others at length and in detail. I just think he was wrong. Not ill-intended, but wrong. And the consequence of that is that I don't have a lot of faith in the old guard at the CIA, and I'm glad Mr. Brennan is retired, and I have huge faith in Mr. Pompeo. I don't know Senator Coates at all, but I, I'm told he's very good on the Intel Committee. And I, I have John a, McCain is very high on Senator Coates. And I'm very high on General Mattis, who I've only met once in a closed session at Hoover, when he was a Hoover uh, greeting the media fellows out there. But I knew his former chief of staff. I know General McChrystal. I'm very sorry he's not in the administration. If there's one guy I would recruit into this administration, uh, objectively, one of the most trusted Americans is Stanley McChrystal. How about David Petraeus? Yes. You know, there's a ministry of all talents. The one thing I don't think the campaign allowed to develop was a sense of the urgency around the world presented by two threats, the near-peer status of the People's Republic of China and their surge into the South uh, China Sea with artificial islands. It's a huge problem. And then the spread of radical Islamic terror. And those are understated. It's not Putin doesn't scare me. It's Saudi Arabia with trees. Uh, and nuclear weapons. He doesn't worry me the way that those two threats worry me. And they weren't much discussed. Well, China's a much stronger nation. Much. 
much. And Both economically and otherwise. Dr. Kissinger's book on China, the last chapter is so chilling. There are two parties inside of China, the tigers and the, the, right. the capitalists. And if the tigers get control, we're in for a very rocky four to eight. Very rocky. Yeah, I've asked often who are the tigers over there. I mean, they, they seem to argue primarily it's the military. Yes, that's what Dr. Kissinger argued. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm going to defer to him. Obviously, I don't know anything about yeah. the subject. I listen to him. But at the same time, Xi Jinping has amassed a huge amount of power. Do you think, and I, I don't have a fix on him, uh, he's very little exposed to me in the way that the previous leaders were not so little exposed. Do you think he is a man of, of growth and peace as opposed to, if oh, necessary? I, I, mean, I, I think China looks at the world with a growing sense that they have to play an important part. You know, it was Robert Zellick went over and told them, you, know, you have to be a stakeholder. And now the military, in terms of carriers and other things. And, and the islands and, which and their hope, nuclear class which you hope that they will not sink into a kind of nationalism. That's the danger, and that's why... A all the promises Donald Trump made, the one I detail the most in this book, is 350 ships for our Navy. We can't stay at 272. We need to go to 350. We need submarines. We need a replacement for the Ohio Cluster. You remember when John Lehman was talking about 500? No, 500 600. 600. 600. Navy. I loved it. And, yeah. uh, and that is Teddy Roosevelt greatness, so, and I think Donald Trump will deliver on that. You think Donald Trump has Teddy Roosevelt greatness yes. in him? In yes. Him? Yes. Why? Uh, because he comes from this city, and this city develops, like Teddy Roosevelt did, an expansive view of the possible. Even when I come back here often now, more That's than nice I used phrase. to. Why did you get that? Uh, well, it is. It's just walk around New York, and you think that anything can be done. Uh, look at what happens here from uh, the, this building in which we're in. I wish all of America could see the Bloomberg building and how extraordinary it is and what it represents in terms of what Americans can do when they are allowed to just kind of create, like Silicon Valley, uh, and I think what Donald Trump imagines for the Midwest. You know, Charlie, in my uh, law school hometown of Ann Arbor, the downtown was dead at Michigan when I was there in the 80s. Yeah. It's alive now because Google bought 60 acres and put their second major campus in the United States. Everything is alive in Ann Arbor with spin-offs and feeder systems and Trump is going to go to Foxconn, which wants to bring a $7 billion investment. So right. Put it in the blue state. Go to Apple and says to, to Tim Cook, why don't you build in Wisconsin? Yeah, it's it's yeah. going to work. So what worries you about Trump? Um, he can wear us out. Uh, most presidents retreat from the headlines at, at periods. Richard Nixon for a long period of time. Ronald Reagan gave us one story a day. I worked for the president. Uh, president Obama flooded the zone, but with a temperament that was very calm condescending sometimes, maddeningly full of straw men, but nevertheless calm. Mm. If we are put on a roller coaster, a daily diet of controversy, it, the country isn't built for that. Politics is not supposed to be that important. Religion, community... And, and do you at some point um, run out your welcome? Yes, he could. 2018 is very close at hand. He's got to deliver on his promises, which he's begun, and he has to make people feel less threatened. I've asked a number of people, and I wrote a column for the Washington Post this weekend about my friends Mike and Debbie, who are just genuinely in a knot. They're, they're center-left people, center-right people. They're a consultant's dream. Uh, they're not ideological. They're successful parents and business people. And Donald Trump has them in a knot. 500,000 people on the Mall in Washington is an extraordinary event that we will tell our grandchildren and our grandchildren will be talking about like they talked about the 1963 march or the mobilization against the war. So women on the move. Women on the move, the Tea Party of the left forming. So what does the President Trump do? I hope respond with generosity in the key of we and direct his infrastructure into the underprivileged communities deliver real health care, not paper, but build clinics and dental chairs, to do things for people who were left behind. That was his major chord. Do and you I think, think they have at hand a replace model? Yes, Tom Price does. Now, there are many models. Uh, Secretary Price, soon to be Secretary Price, uh, is a great market and a great believer in taking down artificial barriers and especially reducing the mandatory uh, procedures covered benefits process back in order to drive it down. Uh, my last job in government was to administer the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program at OPM, and we had one packet for every federal employee in the D.C. area with 600 options. 